Well, another day is coming to an end on the homestead. It's time to go put all of the animals away for the night and make sure everybody is safe and has what they need until morning. Well, the turkeys don't know it, but tonight is going to be their last night in what we call the brooder barn. Tomorrow morning, we plan on moving them over to their permanent house uh, where they'll have a nice outside run, and tomorrow will actually be the first day we're allowing them to go outside. So this will be their last night in here, and I think tomorrow they're going to have a great day. Let's go lock them up and make sure they're okay. We just have kind of a temporary screen door on this room here. This is where we start all of the chicks on the homestead, whether it's chicken chicks or turkeys. They all start in this room. We have this set aside just as a brooding room. You can see the turkeys are getting big. Let's go in and check their water. You can see they're, they're growing pretty fast, especially the broad-breasted turkeys. They're growing really fast, but I have to say that I'm very impressed with how fast these blue slate heritage turkeys are growing as well. Looks like they're good on food and water for tonight, so there's nothing else we really need to do with them except turn their light off and lock them up. All right, turkeys, see you in the morning. All right, they're all safe. The quail are right next door. Now the quail, their light and their fan is on a timer, so we don't really have to do anything with the quail because they're on an automatic water and I feed them every morning. I know they're good for tonight, so all we have to do with them is shut their door. Well, behind me is where the chickens stay at night. This is our hen house. And they have gone to bed on their own. Once the sun starts going down, chickens naturally go back to their safety area. And in most cases, on most farms, that is back into the chicken coop. They like to uh, roost at night up on, you know, branches or boards or whatever you have in your hen house. But chickens are one thing that are very easy. They kind of train themselves to go back into their hen house. So if you're new to chickens and you're wondering how you'll ever get free range chickens back into their coop at night, they're easy. They go in on their own. So we just need to shut them back in there and close their little door. Basically what we're doing here at night when we're putting away especially the poultry is we are protecting them from predators that come out at night. We have, uh, we have raccoons here, we have possums, coyotes, bobcats, owls, all of them come out at night and our chickens and our ducks and everything are easy prey for them. So we're just protecting them from, the, from those overnight predators. Now the ducks love this time of night. The chickens already are in bed. They go to bed super early, but the ducks, they wait until it's completely dark. Most nights they go into their house all by themselves. If I come out just right after it's completely dark, they're already in. If I were to try to get them in this time of night, they don't like it. There's a lot of bugs out right now and the ducks love to eat all the bugs. So they're not gonna go to bed just yet. So we'll move on. We need to take care of the goats and the pigs, and then hopefully it'll be dark enough that the ducks will have gone in on their own. Before I go feed the goats, I'm gonna check quickly on the rabbits as we walk by. I noticed that the uh, mama and her babies, they need some water. We'll feed, them in a, we'll feed them in the morning. That's part of our morning chores. But I want to make sure that she has enough water overnight because it's been hot. I'm also going to take this tea post out overnight. We keep this there just for added airflow. But I don't want an opportunity for a raccoon or something to be able to uh, push this up and get inside. 
they would have these guys for dinner. Okay, it's time to feed the goats. They are hungry. We've been gone most of the day, actually running to get Kevin's tractor. We had to drive about two hours to pick it up and then two hours back. And it was raining this morning when we left, so we didn't let the goats out into their pen area to forage. So generally at night, I don't feed them because we have been having them out eating leaves and sticks and grass and those kinds of things, but they didn't get to do that today, so they're hungry. hay for the boys. Let's go give this to the boy goats. Hey guys. Well, the pigs don't really need anything at night, but they are up here saying good night. So most of the time they go back and end up sleeping in their house back in the woods overnight. All we need to do is make sure they have enough food and water. Feeder is still half full. The water is about three quarters full, so they're fine for tonight. You guys need to go get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. We always need to make sure that the electric fence is on for the garden overnight. Otherwise, we'll lose our, our vegetables. It was already on, but I always like to double check because all it takes is one night of forgetting and a lot of plants can be eaten. Let's go see if the ducks are ready to go in. Nope, they're still not ready to go in. Like I said, they always wait until it's like pitch black. They wanna get as many bugs as they can before they sleep for the night. We'll have to come back out after it gets completely dark. So now the ducks are in. Nothing else we need to do with them for the night. They don't get food or water overnight. We just shut their door, lock them up tight, and they'll be fine until morning. Well, that's it for our chores for tonight. We'll see you guys bright and early in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Well, Kevin and I decided to come out early this morning out to the garden to do some picking. We are just at the beginning of a heat wave here in Southern Missouri. It's gonna be hot today and over the next few days, it's gonna be hot and muggy. So we're gonna see what needs to be picked in the garden, see how things are doing before the sun comes out and just it's scorching. Well, it looks like it's going to be a pretty nice harvest morning here in the garden. I see a lot of red tomatoes that are ready to pick. Quite a few cherry tomatoes. I know there's a ton of okra. It's been a few days since we've picked okra. And we have a lot of green beans that need to be picked. We can't pick green beans this morning, though. We had heavy dew overnight. And you don't want to pick your green beans when the plants are wet because it can easily transfer disease from one plant to another. So we'll have to wait until this evening, maybe this afternoon, if it's not too hot, but we have to wait on the beans. But it looks like it's gonna be another bumper crop. We've already picked two times, and I have already canned 13 quarts of green beans. 
My magic number for one year is 50 quarts so that we can have about one quart of green beans every week. I would love more, but 50 is what I'm looking for. Right. But my job this morning is to pick tomatoes. Kevin's gonna pick okra, and then we'll take a look around and see if there's anything else that needs to be picked. You don't have to be smart. No need to dress up for me to see that you're a good man, you're a good man, a real good man. When the wind blows and the windows are closing, you Well, here's today's tomato harvest. I'm pretty happy with this, considering the tomato year that we are having. This batch will turn into more salsa. I didn't can enough salsa last year and we ran out early, so I'm concentrating mostly early this year on replenishing our salsa supply. Now, this year, this tomato year, has been the hardest tomato year that we've ever had and it looks like our harvest overall will be way less than we need. But the good news is last year, remember when we were bringing back five or six of these baskets full of tomatoes a day, or at least a couple times a week? That was a good tomato year, and I put up so many tomatoes that we still have enough diced tomatoes and tomato juice in the house for all of this winter. So that is a huge blessing, and that's why when we have a bumper crop of a certain vegetable, we can it and preserve it to have it for multiple years rather than just taking it all to the farmer's market to sell because you just never know. This year we'll probably have enough tomatoes to replenish our salsa and hopefully some tomato sauce because we're out of tomato sauce. But if nothing else, we'll just cook everything from diced tomatoes and tomato juice this winter. Because of this good tomato harvest today, I have plenty to do a nice big batch of salsa, which means I also need to pick peppers. So let's go see how they're doing. These are some gorgeous bell peppers. The size is absolutely perfect per for picking, but these here are yellow bell peppers and right next to them are the orange bell peppers and they're doing great as well. So as tempting as it is to pick these guys, I want to wait longer and allow them to turn yellow and for those to turn orange. So I'm going to keep heading back in the row and get the green bell peppers. My favorite bell pepper plant of all time is called the Emerald Giant. And last year I saved seeds, which is a good thing because Baker Creek didn't offer the seed this year. So this is an Emerald Giant, and these are my favorite. Well, all in all, a nice harvest this morning. I was surprised that there weren't quite as many okra as I thought. I picked maybe 15 or 20 okra, but not as many as I would have thought. But I have learned my lesson with okra. Every year they start off slow and I think, oh, we should have planted more plants. <laughs> and then in about another month, there are so many okra that I think, oh my gosh, we should have planted about a tenth of the plants that we planted. So right. this year we planted about 30 plants. That will be more than enough for what we need, probably way more than enough. Um, but I really do like eating okra, so they'll, They'll all get eaten, don't worry about that. So we're gonna take these baskets into the house, have a cup of coffee, and then we're gonna get ready to move the turkeys from the brooder area into their new home. Well, we're getting ready to move the turkeys over to their new run area here. Now this is where our chickens were up until about a month ago. And this is what happens in the Ozarks when you leave something sit for a month without mowing it or having animals in it. Everything just grows huge. Uh, this is part of the reason why Back to Eden Gardening just doesn't 
work very well here because no matter how much mulch you put down on something you can't keep these kinds of weeds out they just keep coming back a lot of this is trumpet vine uh, which i think was planted here by the previous owner of this place and it just takes over everything uh, but a lot of this is just good old-fashioned weeds that need to be mowed down so i'm hoping i can get in here with the riding mower and hopefully it'll be able to cut it. If not, I'm going to have to use the weed eater on this entire thing. So it's getting hot out. I want to get to work so that we can get these turkeys moved over to this area. Let me show you inside the chicken and turkey coop area. This coop used to be just for the chickens and Kevin divided it into two areas when we downsized our laying flock. So the chickens have this area over here where I'm standing with two nesting boxes. We only have six chickens right now including the two roosters. But in here is where the turkeys will come at night and if they want to get away from the elements outside they can come in here. We spread straw in here for the bedding for the turkeys. Now they'll have access to the run area, which is actually this way, through a door here that opens and closes from the outside. So they won't have to come in through the big door and then through the chicken wire door and into here. They'll just come in and out here. That way we can keep them separate from, from the chickens who now free range outside. The run area that we have for them is pretty big, so we think that they'll be happy out there. Let's go see how Kevin finished that up. So I was able to get this area mowed with the riding mower. That's nice. <laughs> it saved me a little work. Uh, but you can see it's a pretty nice size area for them. I think they'll be real happy back here. Now just keep in mind that even though we're moving 11 turkeys over here today, six of those are the broad-breasted turkeys, and they will be going in the freezer yet this fall. So the only permanent residents that'll be living here are the five blue slate turkeys. It may even end up being less than that if some of those are males. So we want to keep one male, but we don't need more than one male. So this will be a plenty big area for them and I think they'll be real happy back here. It's a good mix of sun and shade for them. Lots of bugs, lots of things for them to eat and uh, they'll be real happy. So as we bring each one out of the brooder and take it over to their new house, we're clipping a wing on each turkey. The fence that we have back there is a five foot fence and turkeys could easily fly over that if you don't keep a wing clipped. Now with any animals, turkeys, chickens, or anything, you only want to clip one wing. That way, when they try to fly, they're off balance and they can't fly. If you clip both wings, they can actually sometimes learn to fly with the cut wings, so uh, it doesn't hurt them at all. It's just like getting a haircut. You just cut the tips of feathers off on one wing, and that way they can't fly up over the fence. They can still fly a little bit, just not very high. All right, well, they're all moved over, so I'm gonna go around back and open their door from the outside and let them out into their run area. This will be the very first time they actually get to go outside. So pretty exciting day for them.
looks like they're having a good time and they're enjoying their freedom. They're starting to explore out a little bit farther and that is really good to see. We will check back in with them later on, but even though it's hot and even though I would like to just stand here and watch them explore all day, we have things to do. So we need to keep working. Well, this afternoon I want to get some more work done on our cow project. For those of you who haven't been following us for a long time, we're in the process of fencing off and getting an area ready so we can get our very first family milk cow. It's a project that I'll admit has taken longer than I had planned because it ended up being a much bigger project than I had planned. So, uh, but we're getting there, we're making progress slowly but surely. A couple months ago we had this carport installed back here uh, and that'll be the barn for the cow. But there are a couple things that I need to do to it to get it more ready to act as an animal shelter. Let's walk inside and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So these metal carports are actually built really nice and sturdy, but there's nothing preventing the cow or our goats when we put them back here from just hitting right against this metal siding. Now the metal siding itself isn't very strong. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take uh, two by fours. I bought some 10 foot two by fours. This is a 20 foot building and I'm going to put two by fours. I'm going to put four of them up the sides of the building. That way, if one of the animals rubs against the side of the building, they'll be rubbing against the two by fours and not against the metal siding. So not a very difficult project. Uh, but it will be something that will really help uh, make this nice, hopefully for a lot longer amount of time. Because we're going to be putting the cow and the goats back here uh, together, they'll be living together, uh, I do need to make sure that this is set up properly for both animals. So I'll be starting the boards pretty low and working them up pretty high so that it's appropriate for our goats, which are really small, and for a cow, whatever size cow we end up getting. So. Uh, I'm excited to get one more step done on this project. I also wanted to show you guys uh, that I finally figured out exactly where the fences are going to go and I'm hoping this week to finally start putting in all the posts for, this, for the fences. So when we first got this land cleared, it looked so different. It was kind of hard for me to really picture what we wanted to do back here. So it's taken me a while to really kind of get the lay of the land and figure out exactly where we wanted fences to go and things for the uh, goats and the cow. But I finally have it all figured out. So what I did is I came back with my bush hog on my tractor and I cut the paths where the electric fence is going to go. So I cut uh, a trail all the way along the front here and then this will actually be the middle. I'm actually gonna make it into two separate paddocks. Now, most of the time they'll probably have access to both paddocks. Uh, but if we do for some reason need to or want to separate them into only half this way We'll have the option to do that So after I bush hogged this I came through I have a rake on the back of my tractor as well I raked this really good to get all of the bigger debris out of the way and that way from here on out I can maintain this uh, along the electric fence with just my regular lawnmower so again, I'm hoping this week to start putting in all of the posts. I've got some things I'm going to show you guys that are different than what we've done in the past. And I'm excited to show you uh, some of the innovative ways that we're going to make this project easy and really a good area for the cow and the goats. Nice. So I'm going to get to work on this. I know Sarah needs to get in the house and take care of all that stuff that we picked earlier today. I think she's even going to can some more salsa this afternoon. So we'll catch back up with you guys this evening and I'll show you the progress that I'm making inside of this barn. Well, it looks like the turkeys did well today. And it looks like they're naturally going into the coop for the night. Well, that guy decided to come back out, but more than half of them are already in there. So if you're nervous about getting poultry or chickens or turkeys, see they kind of figure it out on their own. Now they came back out because they heard us out here. But I'm sure glad they had a great day, first day of freedom. Well, I got my project done here in the barn. Took me most of the afternoon. It was hot, 
I think I drank an entire gallon of water while I was working, but I got it done. I think it's going to be great. I think this will definitely protect that metal siding on the barn if the cow or the goats rub up against it. So I'm happy. One more project crossed off the list. One step closer to getting our first family milk cow. Another day is coming to an end here on the homestead, just like when we started this video. It's time to uh, go back and do chores again, and tomorrow we'll start all over again. I hope you guys are enjoying our videos. If you're not a subscriber of our channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you know someone else who would enjoy it or enjoys this type of lifestyle, go ahead and share this on your social media. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.